Peugeot has taken 20 years to come up with a successor to the 205 GTI, the car many consider the greatest hot hatch of all time. And here it is, the 208 GTI. Now at first glance, this car doesn't look much different to a regular 208. Look a bit closer though, and you'll spot the red go faster stripe under the grille. 17 inch alloys inside bigger wheel arches and the GTI badge on the C-pillar, a deliberate nod to the 205. Can it live up to the legend? Let's find out. The 208 GTI costs around £19,000, the same as a Renault Sport Clio, but £2,000 more than Ford's new Fiesta ST. Its 1.6 litre turbo engine comes from the Mini Cooper S, but is tuned to produce 197 brake horsepower. That's enough for 0-62 in 6.8 seconds. I actually used to own a 205 GTI and I've got fond memories of driving it down country roads like this. And less fond memories of losing the back end in a corner and ending up in a field full of sheep. There are no such worries with this though. It's a softer, less edgy feeling car with a tendency to understeer or run wide if you push it too hard in a bend. Plus, there's standard stability control to keep you safe. Which puts every car through a high-speed swerve test to assess its handling at the limit. Click here to find out more about how we test. Fortunately, the Peugeot's still a lot of fun to drive. The steering's light, but you get plenty of feedback about what the front wheels are doing, and this six-speed manual gearbox feels slick. The ride isn't bad for a hot hatch either, although it is much firmer than the regular 208. Claimed fuel economy is 47.9 miles per gallon, but other 208s fell well short of the claims when we put them through our own, more realistic tests. Read our Peugeot 208 full review to learn more. There's no shortage of 80s red stripes inside the GTI either. They're on the door handles, the steering wheel, even on the seat belts. But this tablet style touchscreen is bang up to date and it includes a built in DAB radio. It's not the most intuitive system to use though, and you don't get a CD player. We love the standard leather sport seats, but the tiny steering wheel divides opinion. Some love its go kart feel, but others find it hard to see the instruments over the top. Definitely a case of try before you buy. Let's not forget the hatch in Hot Hatch though. This is a practical car with room for two adults in the back and boot space on par with rivals like the Fiesta. As for the Hot, the Peugeot certainly feels quick, but you don't need to rev it hard like the old 205. There's plenty of mid-range turbocharged punch and that's the kind of performance you can use all the time. It's just a shame it doesn't sound a bit more inspiring though despite that twin exhaust pipe. Peugeot reliability is another more serious concern. Click here to read the results of the Witch Car survey, the largest in the UK. After a series of disappointing Peugeot GTIs, the 208 finally feels like a car that's worthy of the badge. I've really enjoyed driving it. Yes, on the right road, the 205 is still more fun, but I'd rather live with the 208 day to day. Besides, it's hardly a fair fight anyway. Buyers today demand so much more in terms of comfort, space, technology and safety, and the 208 ticks all those boxes. Retro red stripes or not, it's a thoroughly modern hot hatch, but I can't see it ever becoming an icon. Click here to read our review of the Peugeot 208, plus two of the GTI's key rivals, the Ford Fiesta ST and Volkswagen Polo GTI.